Well, welcome. You are the first to be interviewed. This is the Meet the Staff uh, portion of the show here on Palm Beach Autographs social media. So first, uh, you know, let everybody know what is your name? What is your role at Palm Beach Autographs? I know you're a big deal, but let people that might not know that know who you are. My name is Danny Dotson, and I um, I just kind of clean up and pick up around the place. And, you know, when the toilets get dirty, I get in and I get in there deep. I get the <laughs> gloves on, I get in there deep, and I clean everything up. No, um, my name is Martin Buckley. I'm one of the co-owners of Palm Beach Autographs, and I've been with the company since 2004, 20, 20 years. Wow, wow, 20 years. So bring us back. How did you first get introduced to Palm Beach Autographs? And what was that like going from not being a part of it to a part of it? So um, Jim Dotson, Steve Dotson and myself were all friends in Gainesville at the University of Florida. And we all collected at the same time and started selling on this little website you might have heard of called eBay. Mm -hmm, and yes. uh, we started selling on eBay in its infancy. Uh, really when it was just getting started. And uh, Jim in, I guess it was 99, showed me how to list on eBay, which was a lot different than it was today. Um, and then they graduated from school. We graduated, moved to Northeast Florida. And in uh, 2004, um, the boys asked me, they said, hey, we're going to open up a, a four-month holiday store in Jacksonville. <laughs> so I signed on for uh i agreed to a four-month deal brian and it's been 20 years so wow wow <laughs> that is uh that's a long four months yeah well so, so we'll see how things go we'll see how they work out yeah yeah we'll see so it's safe to say you enjoyed it and uh it's been a good experience then i mean it's 20 years is a lot yeah i mean this has been a passion of mine the industry has been a passion of mine since i was a little kid and collected baseball cards and then started getting them signed when I would go to spring training games uh, in the in the 90s. Um, but yeah, this was this was something that I've loved forever. So to be able to um, take a hobby, something that I've loved for my entire life, figure out how to make money at it and then figure out how to give back in a really meaningful way through PBA Cares has been one of the most uh one of my favorite things in my entire life. I, I truly love, I wake up every single day. Sure, we have tough days where there's a lot of work to be done, but I never think for a second, oh, I have to go to work today. It just doesn't happen. I love what I do. How early on in your life were you a fan of memorabilia and sports and autographs? So it sounds like right from when you were a kid, you were collecting cards and into that sort of thing. Yeah, so when I was a little kid, probably around you know 10 or 11, I started buying packs of baseball cards. I can remember buying, uh, I was a big fan of the Mets when I was a little kid. I grew up in New Jersey and the Mets won the World Series in 86. And I can remember trying to buy all the 86 tops cards to put together the entire team set. So probably around that 86, 87 for sure. Uh, and then in 87, I went to my very first autograph signing. And uh, it was in the Meadowlands and Daryl Strawberry, who was my favorite player uh, in the whole world, was signing autographs. And I remember, Brian, I had this um, baseball. It was a Little League baseball. It was brand new and, and I wouldn't use it. I would just rub it during the Mets games. I think it like I felt like it gave the team good luck. So I brought that baseball with me and I, um, I paid $12.50 to have Daryl Strawberry autograph yeah. that baseball. So that started it and I still have the baseball. So that's kind of cool that I have the the one that started it all. And uh, then when I moved to Florida in 90, um, my mom got me spring training tickets. So I would go to Kissimmee to see the Astros and Vero to see the Dodgers and Port St. Lucie to see the Mets. And I would bring all my cards and get all the different players to sign autographs. And that's sort of how I started collecting autographs. And then from there, uh, later in my college years, that's when I started selling. That's when I first started selling things. Oh, wow. That is so cool. It's uh, I remember, you know, as a kid growing up in New York, I grew up watching Daryl Strawberry when I would go to Mets games. So uh, he was the best. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that name, what a great name. Strawberry. It's hard to forget yeah. that one, right? <laughs> Absolutely. A phenomenal ball player. And there is 
I remember Bob Costas said one time, it's kind of sad when you think about it. Like there was a point in the eighties, even in into the early nineties where you said, name one pitcher and one player that are definitely going to the hall of fame that are active right now. And a lot of people would have said Dwight Gooden and Daryl strawberry. Neither one of them are in because of some decisions they made in life, but we all live and learn and they both seem to be doing well. We do a lot of autograph signings with those guys now. So I was about items to ask, is that surreal now as an adult to be working with people like that as a kid that you looked up to? Yeah. Every now and then that definitely does happen. Um, you know, a lot of times, especially with like the younger guys that we work with, they, they just seem like such kids. Like it doesn't really affect me. You, you yeah. know, the feeling, right? Yeah, you see some yeah. of these guys and you're like, this this guy's 23 years old. Yeah, you know? this guy's a multimillionaire. <laughs> People got his name on the back of a jersey, but he's a kid. It's it's he's weird a, as you get older. It is. But like there's certain guys like I can remember the first time Jim and I went to um, Chantilly, Virginia, and we were doing a big show there. And I was very excited to meet another guy who you were probably a fan of, too, Bo Jackson. Oh, yeah. And, you know, Bonus, my wife was uh, like sports. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my, my wife was like, why are you so excited? And I told her, I said, listen, I said, when I was a kid, there was a time where it was Michael Jordan, Mike Tyson, and Bo Jackson were the three biggest names on the planet. So there are those moments where you meet guys like that. You know, you meet Magic Johnson or Larry Bird, um, you know, some of these guys. And um, you think back, like I always say, uh, you know, 13-year-old Martin would never never believe it if I whispered in his ear that one day, you know, we'll be working with all these dudes and be on a first name basis and doing business with them. So yeah, it definitely surreal is definitely the word for it for sure. Yeah. I remember when we had Alan Iverson up in the Wellington store, not that long ago. And that was very surreal kind of like, wow, that's AI. Like I remember him crossing <laughs> over Michael Jordan and now here he is in the store. Very surreal. And the turnouts we get, I mean, it's a cool feeling, you know, when you're providing that for other people, especially adults that, you know, you can see the little kid light up in them when they see their athlete that they grew up watching. So absolutely. It's really cool. I always tell people with Palm Beach autographs, you're literally providing joy and nostalgia to people. And uh, that's one of the coolest parts about it. I think. I agree a hundred percent. We, um, you know, to your point, it just made me think there was a uh, wasn't that long ago. We had Pete Rose up in Jacksonville and Pete's awesome. He's uh, I'm a baseball guy. The guy will literally sit and talk baseball forever. Takes time with each person really makes to your point the moment. He really creates that moment for people. You know, he's not just in there signing the ball and rolling it off to the side and, you know, waiting for the next person. He really engages with everybody. And this guy in line was like talking to me. And he, I remember he said, he goes, outside of the birth of my children and my wedding, this is the third coolest moment of my life. He told oh, me this wow. in line. And it's like, you know, we take it for granted, right? You and I, we sit there and we go, all right, we got to unpack all these jerseys. We got to unpack all these baseballs. We got to unpack all these photos. We got to lay everything out. You know, this is going to be a long day. And this guy literally told me that outside of the birth of his child and his wedding, that this was the third most important thing that we provided. And so I went over to Pete and I whispered that to him, you know, in line. And he really poured into him and talked to him for a while. And the guy left in tears. This is a grown man in his 60s. Yeah. And he left in tears. So wow. it absolutely, um, that side of it, that number one is my favorite thing that we do. And then the second thing for me, and they'll probably go hand in hand, is the philanthropic side that we do. The, the way that what we do for a living is able to help raise millions and millions of dollars for so many amazing charities. So like those two things, the fact that we can do what we love, provide really nostalgic memories for all these people and be impactful with really incredible philanthropic efforts. It's, it's awesome. That's amazing. Uh, so cool to get to do something for a living that you're passionate about and that brings joy to you and other people. So really uh, inspiring. Uh, one of my other questions for you, what are some of your favorite autographs in your personal collection? Man, all right. That's a good question. So um, I was able to get Paul McCartney to sign a cover of Meet the Beatles. Uh, I gave it to my wife because she's a huge Beatles fan. But I met Paul when the Super Bowl was in Jacksonville, and he was nice enough to sign that. So that's definitely up there. Um, definitely the strawberry baseball, because that's my first one. Um, 
you know, I, I don't, I, it's funny. I own a mar- memorabilia company. I don't have that many things. Like, as you can see. Yeah. You're like, around it all day. You're like, I don't need to bring <laughs> this home. <laughs> yeah. But there's like, there's some special ones. Um, I was uh, really good friends. I had the good fortune of uh, being really good friends with Tim Wakefield, uh, who is a, a, a family friend and a personal friend of mine for many, many years. So he signed some things for me uh, personally that have a lot of meaning. They, you know, value wise, they might not have a lot of value to a lot of people, but for me personally, they mean a lot. Um, I've got some, I've got some keeper items. I've got some Jordans and some Kobe's and things like that, that have some value that, you know, one day the kids will inherit. Um, they'll either sell it or they'll think it's cool. One or the other. This is how I know you're jaded. You're casually just nonchalantly (laughs) mentioning, yeah, I got some Kobe and Michael Jordan, you know, the greatest (laughs) basketball player of all time. Got some of those, not a big deal. Moving on. Um, I'll pass those down to my kids. Uh, it's like you own Kobe and Jordan autographs. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And, and I guess what I would ask is, are there any is, are there any autographs in the PBA collection that you don't own that, but that you're personally like, God, that that's that's one of my favorites. Yeah, absolutely. So funny enough. Uh, well, two things. First of all, the one thing is the boys will tell you so many times. I mean, over the course of 20 years, I can't tell you how many times we'll do an autograph signing with somebody and I'll get something done and I'll be like, oh, this is awesome. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep this. And then two years later, I'll be like, I don't want this anymore. And I'll just sell it like because it constantly rotates. Right. There's always new cool things. You know, we I mean, you're in the Wellington location, Brian. You see pretty much everything that's coming through. I mean, we have so many unique, really cool oh, yeah. items that are coming through. Um, I finally, from the last signing, got a pair I've always loved. And we just sold them. I think the case, yeah, the case is empty. We literally, right before we started this interview, uh, a customer came in and bought our last pair of Shaq shoes. And oh, I can wow. remember, yeah, like we're around the same age. I can remember being a little kid. You remember you walk into a restaurant or a Foot Locker and they'd have the Shaq shoe sitting there. And, oh, yeah. Holy cow, that's so big. So I finally bought a pair. That is probably one. Um, oh, I keep telling Jim, I think I need to get this. We have the um, the Dream Team piece that's signed oh. by every member of the Dream Team. I mean, wow. for uh, you know that to me, that to me is probably that's probably my favorite item that we have right now, Palm Beach. That I don't have. Maybe I'll take it home for a little bit and then we'll sell wow. it. Nobody will right. know. You'll have Nobody to send me a, an image, a photo of that, so I'll include it. But that, that I mean, the dream team, it doesn't get any bigger than that, especially if you grew up in the 90s and are a fan yeah. of basketball. Um, I still if- feel bad for Isaiah Thomas. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Michael man. Jordan said he wouldn't play if he was on the team, and he's still it's- bitter about that to this day. Uh, I, how could you not be? I mean, I've always said that is the single greatest team ever assembled. Find me another team where every player, except for one, uh, who's a friend of ours, uh, Christian Leitner, every single player on that team is in the Hall of Fame. And a fun fact, I don't know a lot of people know this, but if it wasn't Leitner on that team, do you know who it was going to be? I actually do remember hearing this, but remind me, I do know the answer. It would have been Shaq. Oh, Shaq really? Was gonna, they wanted to have one college player. Oh, wow. <laughs> and Leitner had such a decorated uh, college career. I mean, arguably one of the greatest college careers of all time but it was kind of between him and Shaq and they went with Leitner. So had Shaq made it, oh. every single player on that team would be in the hall of fame. Wow. Shaq must yeah. be to this day. He's like, damn, I was this close <laughs> to the dream team. Can you imagine? Yeah. So let me ask you this. What currently is your favorite team and your favorite athlete can be college pro any sport, just your favorite team. Who, what games do you get excited to watch? And who's so, your favorite player. Oh, Danny's calling. Hold on. Let me ignore that one sec. Sorry, Did you Danny. lose me? <laughs> nope, Sorry, Danny. We'll there. call you back. All right. So I'm a big gay. I love the Gators. I love Gator sports. Um, we I bring my kids to a lot of Gator games. Uh, the boys are all Gator fans. We watch a lot of Gator games. Uh, I'm also a huge Steelers fan. Love the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, so on the Gators, the cool thing about the Gators is you know, when you say fan, it's like, well, Tim Tebow and Danny Warfel and Steve Spurrier are all friends of mine. So, uh, like, I, yeah, I'm a fan of all three of those guys. I love those guys and what they accomplished. Um, but, you know, they're, we work with them all the time. They're great friends. Uh, but I am also a huge fan of all three of those guys. Um, for the Steelers, 
Um, I was always a big Jerome Bettis and Troy Polamalu and Heinz Ward uh, fan. Loved those guys. Th those were kind of my era. Uh, and then, believe it or not, I'm one of the very few uh, real life in person since day one Florida Marlins fans. I'm a Marlins fan or a Miami oh. Marlins fan, I should say. Okay, nice, <laughs> nice. Um, so they just always trade all their players away, though. So <laughs> loved Miguel Cabrera when he was there. Um, you know, but go back to the day one guys, the boys, Jim, Steve, and Dan were actually at the first game. I was at the first spring training game. Fun fact about the Dotsons and, and uh, the Florida Marlins, but they were there and saw Joe DiMaggio throw out the first pitch for that game. So I was always envious when they've told me that they were at that game. But um, yeah, those are kind of my teams, the Marlins, the Gators, the Steelers. I love baseball. I love playing golf. Um, I used to watch a lot more sports, but I have three kids now, so I'm most of the time uh, coaching sports more than I am playing sports. Yeah, I hear kids can take up some time. I've heard that. <laughs> they do. They do. Which, it's who, the best ever. Who's your favorite golfer? Um, you got to say Tiger. And it was, it's funny because I remember thinking early on, I was like, oh, you know, he's so brash and arrogant. But then, you know, in his early days, but then I quickly realized uh, I'm witnessing greatness and I started following his career very, very early on and realized, you know, we may never see anything like this again. And it wasn't brashness or arrogance. It was confidence. And it was his way of dealing with all of that media attention and all of the fame that he had to do. So uh, I think he's the greatest golfer of all time. No disrespect to Jack, but um, you know, Tiger created a whole generation of, of golfers. And uh, so, yeah, I'd say I, I'd have to say tiger. And we obviously have tons of autographed tiger Woods stuff for anybody watching this. Uh, and, you know, it's funny you speaking about tiger. That's kind of how I feel felt about Kobe. There's so many players that, you know, you love to hate while they're playing. And then as they get towards the end of their career, you're like, Oh no. And you realize how much <laughs> you love them. That's why I thought that one Kobe Bryant commercial was so brilliant where he's like orchestrating them all chanting that they hate him because that's that's sports, right? You love and hate and these people are so polarizing. But then once they get close to retirement, you're like, oh, no, who am I yeah. going to hate now? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think we all, I think Kobe's a great example of that. I think LeBron's a current example of yep. that. I think a lot of people are experiencing that with Brady. Um, yeah. Yeah. He's another there's one. A, there's a lot of those guys where people just, for whatever reason, but, and then the older I get to, I just learn to just sort of admire everybody for who they are and accept their differences and just realize that, you know, we, I mean, the NBA right now has so much talent. It's unbelievable. Oh my gosh. Did you, have you been watching the playoffs? I mean, yes. Anthony Edwards is an up and coming potential face of the league. Uh, you know, Ja Morant will be back. He was the guy who kind of fumbled the ball, if you will. But he's going to be back. And so I'd love to see him versus Edwards. Oh. Uh, you've got Denver, which will probably be a contender. Boston up and coming. It was yeah. really a shame to see New York go out the way they did with Brunson yeah. breaking his hand. That was really disappointing. Yeah, they had a great run. And, I mean, it's been so long for the Knicks. Oh, it's yeah. been so long. For I them. always they joke. Really I'm like, I don't know it. what's harder to be a Knicks fan or a Jets fan, but man, just New York in general. It's like, unless you're a Yankees fan, it's been brutal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Same with the Mets. It's been since 86 for the Mets and they've had a lot of really good teams in between there. So yeah, I mean, giants have had a couple, like you said, the Yankees, they have them all. <laughs> but aside from that, it's been, a, it's been a, been a while. Well, I know you're a busy guy. I have a few more questions here. Uh, <laughs> we're not just sports for anybody watching. So we have tons of autograph movie posters, pictures of celebrities, albums. My question to you, favorite celebrity, favorite movie? Okay. Um, favorite celebrity, I'm going to go music. I'm going to stay in the mu I'm a huge music guy. I always say, uh, everyone always asks me, they're like, oh, you want a sports memorabilia you know, company? You must have tons of memorabilia. No, I have tons of uh, vinyl albums and concert posters. And that's what I love collecting. So I'm going to say celebrity. I'm going to say I'm a big Pearl Jam fan. So I'll say Eddie Vedder. Okay. Um, love Eddie Vedder. Love Pearl Jam. Seen them a bunch. And then favorite movies tough. Uh, I love, I love movies. So let's go uh, drama. 
I'm going to say Shawshank Redemption, which I believe we have a poster Great signed by movie. both those guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great movie. Great movie. And then uh, it's tough with comedies. But uh, there's so many good ones. I'll go Step Brothers, which I know we have their posters for sure. Oh, and yeah, Anchorman, absolutely. of course, and you, everything but, in that breath. Yes, those are classics. <laughs> uh oh, I think we we lost uh, we lost Martin. Some technical difficulties. There's the picture. All right, we're back. Baby. <laughs> we're back. He got so excited about his favorite celebrities. I karate movies. chopped karate. the yeah. line. Uh, favorite TV show ever. Ooh, so for drama, I got to go Breaking Bad. Got to go Breaking Bad. We also Bad. have autograph Breaking Bad. I, uh, I know. I feel like I'm shamelessly plugging the store, but I swear I'm not. Listen, that's <laughs> that's what we got to do. If you don't do it, I will. I mean, I'm just looking at the the Tebow jersey behind you. I'm like, I can maybe add that to my collection. You got Pele. So uh, plug uh, and away, then for, my brother. And then for comedies, uh, I'm currently doing. Uh, who knows? Probably my tenth rewatch of uh it's always sunny in philadelphia love that show love seinfeld of course as well oh in yeah the office. that's my favorite and we can plug in literally all of those you'll notice like what we've noticed that works is like when we think of nostalgia we think of the things that we would want mm -hmm. that we think are cool and that we create them and it turns out a lot of other people feel that way so um yeah i'd say those those three or four shows for sure what about you uh, Who's interviewing you? Who's going to interview you? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I I'll interview you. Yeah, maybe I'll have you back to do my interview. You know, yeah. so my I'll <laughs> tell you now. My favorite TV show ever is Seinfeld. I obsess so with good. it. Can quote every episode. I also love Curb Your Enthusiasm, which is the quasi Seinfeld spinoff. You know, love, love, love Curb. Uh, sad to see it go, but man, they what a brilliant ending. So sad to see it go. I love the ending as well. I thought he did a great job. Huge yeah. fan of that that sort of humor. Um, but I'm going to finish up your interview. If you guys want to see my interview, you come back. I'll have Martin <laughs> interview me. Uh, Count on it. But, uh, okay, so a few more questions here. What is something about you, Martin, that people would be surprised to know? What's a unique, relatively unknown thing about you? Okay. Um, um, <laughs> I could say something like, ridiculous. I'm a ballerina. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I think it would probably be that I attend I probably attend somewhere in the neighborhood of like I'd say probably 50 concerts a year I go to a ton a ton of live music so a lot of people think you know because of the sports memorabilia company everything's sports related but probably just how big of a, a, a fan of music is specifically live music um, I bring my family my friends we have several really, really nice venues uh, here uh, in, in Northeast Florida. I travel to a lot of different concerts. Um, but yeah, I'd probably say, I, I think a lot of people wouldn't realize how many live concerts I go to. Unless you're friends with me on social media, then, you'd, you'd, then you would know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So music guy. And yeah. now tell me what is the best advice you were ever given and the worst advice you were ever given? Oh, man. So... I've gotten a lot of good advice, a lot of really good advice. I've had some really impactful people. Um, I have in my phone, I have tons of quotes, but the one that I always probably lean on daily is uh, be kinder than necessary for everyone you meet is fighting some sort of battle. And that in a synopsis really drives home. I'm a big believer in uh, always trying to lean on grace, compassion, and empathy uh, even when people frustrate us and when people upset us and all of those things to really lean on those three things. So I would say that is the best piece of advice I ever got. Um, and has really helped me kind of get to where I am today as an adult. And the worst piece of advice uh, I probably got was from, I'm not going to say his name, but there was a guy, there was a teacher I remember. And uh, he he was really combative to me about, I always wanted to be a professional baseball player. And he was like, well, what if that doesn't work out? What if you can't be a professional baseball player? Then what are you going to do? And I always said, I'll just, you know, work in sports in general. I'll just do something in sports. And it didn't resonate to him. And he didn't give me advice, but he definitely challenged me against following my dreams. And the older I get and now having kids of my own, uh, and you're somebody that's always followed your dreams. So you can answer this as well. 
that nothing will make you feel better than giving 100% of your effort towards really doing what you want to do. I wanted to play professional baseball. I didn't play professional baseball. That's okay. Now I work with tons of professional baseball players and basketball players and football players and actors and actors. And I get to meet all these interesting people and still do what I love. So when people try to challenge you on doing what you want to do or doing what you love, I'd say that's probably the worst piece of advice. I love it, man. I love it. Very, very wise words from from you on good advice and bad advice. And like I said, I know you're busy. So this is my <laughs> last question for you. Okay? All right. I love looking at your beautiful face. Uh, what are some... I shaved for you. I, I love it. Everywhere, apparently. Everywhere. <laughs> um, what is some things that our followers and customers, is there anything in the... PBA pipeline or news that you want to let people know or anything like that? We've got, you know, another really exciting uh, football season coming up and we are currently working on a lot of really, really, really good uh, autograph signings. Dolphins fans are going to be happy. Jaguars fans are going to be happy. Um, not going to say any names because we don't want, you know, to get flooded uh, just yet, but um, we really do, love putting on there are a lot of work doing these public signings there's a lot of time energy and effort that go behind the scenes as you know um and you do a great job with capturing all those videos for us so for the people that are watching that are seeing all the awesome videos this is the guy that does all of that and does an incredible job and we are thankful for that thank you um, brother but we're gonna have an we're gonna have another run of awesome autograph signings um we you know we're always creating new products uh, you know, people constantly come in or they'll, you know, you got anything new? Yeah, we got a lot of things new. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'd say almost on a weekly, if not monthly basis. So make sure you're always checking out um, palmbeachautographs.com, our website, and then following us on all of our platforms, whether it's, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, um, you know, all those locations. YouTube, we constantly, now on YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> yeah, follow us on YouTube. You guys are going to have a podcast on there soon. That's exciting. Yeah, um, we're about so, to start that. Yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we're always doing cool things. The, the thing that I always get, you know, excited about that I love, my favorite product line right now is all the grab bags we have. Um, you know, it's a massive product line. It continues to grow. We continue to put really, really, you know, uh, desirable items in there. So always make sure and, you know, see what we have for our grab bag selection and, and then make sure you're following us for our upcoming signings. Awesome. Martin, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for uh, letting me interview you. And You're I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. You're the man. You're the man. Okay, we're both the man. <laughs> <laughs> have a great rest of your day, brother. Thanks for uh, answering. See you, brother. Let me know if you need anything. All right, later. Later, buddy.